10 minutes of tiny details cut from Fallout 4. When approaching the Adam Cat's garage for the first time, it was originally intended for the player to observe a power armor drag race between Zeke and Johnny D. I hope that hunk of junk makes it to the finish. Oh, I'm gonna make it to the finish. And, and all the way around the planet. And back again before you even get there. All right, get in position, boys. It's showtime. Three, two, one. Go! Go get him, Ziki! Hey, he got a head start! Hot dog! Yeah! Hoo-hoo! <laughs> what a drag. That was a slick showing, boss. You're the cat's meow, Zeke. The Adam Cat's top cat has done it again! The Brotherhood of Steel scribes on the Pridwin were originally meant to have their own white lab coats with the Brotherhood symbol on them but were later replaced by the science scribe armor. Kate was once planned to wear a bandolier over her corset. This armor item only appears in the game files. It has a damage resistance of 2 and sells for 20 caps. According to a concept art picture from the Art of Fallout 4, the Institute was initially meant to have a different armor. In the vanilla game, in the abduction sequence, they ended up using the traditional Institute science outfit, but originally, it seems Bethesda had plans for something much more cooler looking. There are unused humming voice lines that were meant to play when the player character would either be using the cooking station or the workbench. <laughs> <laughs> A unique institute gourd was once intended to appear in the commonwealth with its model looking similar to a melon. It would have restored 20 hit points without adding any radiation. The sweater vest and slacks, t-shirt and slacks, and the laundered pink dress have unused dirty versions of them that never appear in the final game. There are over 50 unused map markers that were never implemented, mostly meant to appear in downtown Boston and the surrounding areas, as well as some in the DLCs. Several addictions were cut from the game, like the mysterious serum addiction that would have caused the player character to suffer a 1 point penalty to strength and radiation resistance, Nuka Cola quantum addiction that would have affected the player's strength, and a buzz bites addiction, making the player lose 20 action points caused by Slocum's buzz bites. Feral ghouls were once intended to drop their own unique ghoul meat that you would have been able to cook and consume. It would have restored your health by 10, but increased radiation by 10 also. Another gross cut consumable can be found in a test cell called Test Cori 01, where on a table in a room with a bunch of cutouts, you can obtain flying ant meat, a kind of meat salvaged from ant swarms. Angler Gunk is a cut junk item that was to be found in the Far Harbor DLC. It was originally intended to be broken down into individual components to be used in crafting and would have provided 3 adhesive when scrapped. Robotic Bits is a cut piece of armor that Nick Valentine would have had on him. It would have provided a plus 1 bonus to perception and occupied the eye slot. Whenever a legendary enemy gets below 50% health, a legendary enemy has mutated message occurs. This message is the same regardless of the mutation, so it's never very clear what exactly this mutation does. Well, as it turns out, in the game files there are unused unique messages that describe each mutation, most likely never implemented because of oversight. A deceased member of the Gunners named Argus was supposed to appear in the Gauntlet in the Nuka World DLC but ended up being disabled. He would have had 14 bottle caps on him and dirty army fatigues. Old Man Billy is a cut character that's quite mysterious. He has an AI package reused from Billy Peabody's parents in Quincy, but he also shares an outfit with Desdemona, the leader of the railroad, which makes me wonder if perhaps he was once created as a male alternative to her. Other cut characters include Confessor Adalia, a member of the Children of Adam, Victor, a super mutant character that was once planned to spawn at Shaw High School, Collins, a Brotherhood of Steel scribe wearing a raider outfit, 
outfit, and according to her file, she would have been connected to the railroad's Rocket's Red Glare quest. She also still has two voice lines. Strange. <laughs> Never mind, let's get her fixed up. When your medic is done, let me know right away. And the Watcher, another cut super mutant that was to be found at the Fraternal Post 115. A cut note was once meant to be found at a workshop inhabited by two cats near the Nuka World Red Rocket titled Hasty Letter that reads, Damn these raiders, they took Nuka World and pushed out or enslaved the traitors there. It's too dangerous for me to stay here anymore, but there's no way I can take the cats with me. If you're reading this and have somewhere safe, please give Luna and Katana a good home. Apparently it was once possible to have dog meat and a standard companion at the same time. Just like in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, dog meat has a separate follower script named Player has dog meat companion active. Unlike the rest of the followers that have the normal Player has companion active script, Vault 81 security officer Scott Edwards also has cut voice lines, acknowledging the player having both dog meat and another companion with them when first entering the vault. Ma'am, what about his friend and the dog? I'll allow it. Security is already extra mindful as it is. There are unused variations of light, medium, and heavy metal helmets, with the heavy version consisting of a helmet, goggles, and a scarf, medium with just a helmet and goggles, and light with just goggles. They would have been found mostly on raiders. There's an unused hologram of Sean, a ghostly looking child version with a pedestal and a trigger that would have activated it. It's speculated that it would have appeared as part of the quest reunions, where using dog meat you look for clues to try to find Kellogg and your son. The hologram could have been intended as one of those clues. At one point during the game's development, it was planned that after doing a certain amount of quests for one of the main factions, the player would have been rewarded with faction-specific perks. Like for instance, the Brotherhood would have rewarded you with an initiate perk that would cause you to take 10% less damage from feral ghouls, super mutants, and synths. The Knight perk that would reduce fusion core explosions, making them smaller, and the Paladin perk that would cause you to recover health while while wearing power armor. The railroad also would have had three faction specific perks. The secret agent perk that would have made the stealth boy effects last 10 seconds longer. The station master perk giving you a 5% bonus on selling items. And the heavy perk that would have caused you to do 10% extra damage to synths and institute foes. The X01 power armor has two unused brotherhood of steel paint schemes for initiate and paladin. There's also a Cut Brotherhood iBot that was meant to be encountered in the Automatron DLC. Visually, it looks identical to the Servo Mech iBots, but has a different grey color, and most notably a Brotherhood of Steel marking on top. In the Nuka World DLC, Cut Quantum Deathclaws were once meant to appear mutated in the same way as the Nuka Lurks. They would have resembled glowing Deathclaws, but with a teal blue glow instead of green. Three unused signs can be found referencing locations that never made it into the final game, like Ruffo's Bakery that reads specializing in wedding cakes and cannoli by the dozen, Greasy Gear Clock Repair, and Nut Island Wastewater Treatment Plant that was meant to appear in the place of the Warwick Homestead. Patches is a cut raider doctor that was once planned to appear in the combat zone and still has some unused dialogue lines. Not many doctors around these days. You should let me take a look at you. Yeah, take a look at me, Doc. What's feeling off today? What can you tell me? Just hurt all over. Huh, you look fine, but... Oh, wait. Yep, that's gonna need to be set back in place. Let's get started. He would have also sold weapons and chems. Are doctors allowed to sell weapons? Isn't that a conflict of interest? Uh, not really. Let's get back to talking about all these great items I have for sale. Hunter's Journal page is another cut note meant to appear in Nuka World, seemingly written by a disgruntled son tired of living in his father's shadow. Dad was the best hunter in the Commonwealth, everyone said so. It always grated on me, no matter what I did, it was never enough. 
It's taken me almost 30 years, but I've finally matched his record. Tonight, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to show everyone who the better hunter really is. There's only one animal he never killed. I've scouted out a den in the hills to the west. Clawcutter is sharpened and ready to go. Let's see how well it works against the Deathclaw. 